Hey everyone, two big money related stories this week. The collapse of the company Carillion in the UK and the shutdown of the US government. Let's talk about Carillion first. The construction giant was one of the big contractors along with the likes of Circle that the government went to when it decided it had to regularly capitulate to the demands of pesky voters and actually build some roads and hospitals and the like. If you've ever seen a politician doing a photo op on a construction site wearing a neon vest and a hard hat then there's a pretty good chance it was a Carillion project. And if you've ever seen that politician later walking onto a board of directors or lobbying in the construction industry you can kind of see why it all fell apart. The whole point of these PFI projects was that the private sector took up the debt rather than the public balance sheet, but after two decades of doing that along with buying up all the competitors, it meant that the balance sheet at Carillion was redder than Jeremy Corbyn and is financially suspect as a forecast from Diane Abbott, and then when Boris Johnson floated the idea this week of spending £100 billion on a massive bridge to France, even that was too little too late. The company itself actually came about at the tail end of the last century and the name Carillion is a corruption of the word Carolyn as in a peal of bells and a clock tower. The government actually used a company whose branding was a spelling mistake in order to build schools. Hmm. Okay, to America then, where as of Friday midnight the government's been shut down over a failure to agree a spending bill. You'd think most people would be pretty happy about the government closing, but actually a lot of people are pretty pissed off it seems. Like many people waiting for their February paycheck after an expensive Christmas, the government has no money left. The cause of it all is pretty simple really, the Republicans have 51 votes out of 100 and that's a majority, but the Senate requires 60 votes in order to pass the spending bill and President Trump's opponents won't vote for it unless the bill also goes off on a tangent and includes guarantees for non-documented workers, although they'd probably actually settle for the President apologising for his recent comments or maybe just offering to repay the people who have bought Trump vodka from the famously teetotal businessman. The government shut down frankly doesn't affect too many people for now, although it's probably a bit of a pain in the neck if you have to get a passport renewed or if you work for the government and want to get back to work attempting to regulate the internet, ban things or scramble for something to pin on Russia and or Paul Manafort. This is the US though, so the government departments like the military and the FBI have pretty big cash reserves to see them through for a while, but this is going to be a pretty protracted mess as well and we'll almost certainly be talking about this next week and possibly the week after that. Anyway, see you next week and week after that potentially. If you like these, click subscribe.